Hi there, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate many of the capabilities of the motion key editor. Most of the character animation in this short video are done using that tool. It's a multifunctional tool that allows you to create detailed poses as well as add energy to your animation through resizing and detaching body parts. You can also create and animate subtle facial expressions with your characters as well. I'm going to start off by showing you how to create a throwing motion much like you saw in the clip. First I'll introduce the pose movement section. As you can see, if I select my character's arm and then click and drag the outer circle that appears, my character's arm will raise and bend according to my mouse movement. When using the outer circle, the character's torso will automatically adjust to create a more balanced full body movement. When using the inner circle, the arm bends in a slightly different way and the torso doesn't try to maintain a body balance. If I select the leg, you'll notice a cross arrow appears. With this, you can adjust the position of your leg anywhere, then proceed to use the circle control to bend and adjust it. If you've made a pose that you don't like and wish to go back, you can select Default Pose and your character will return to the default position. You can also select the mirror option. If you have this selected, both limbs will move in the same direction at the same time. You can select the reverse option and your limbs will start moving in the opposite direction. I've given my character some bunny ears to demonstrate how it works on the ears as well. You can see again that the inner and outer circle controllers show different results. I'll show another example of pose movement with the head. As you can see, when I use the outer circle controller, the torso will adjust accordingly to balance out the movement. If I use the inner circle, the head will tilt without much counterbalancing action from the body. If I combine both of these circles, I can bring my character's arm back like he is about to throw a ball. You can play with the combinations yourself to create unique motions. The next step is to animate. To do that, I'll move a little ahead on the timeline, and then use the outer and inner circle controllers in combination to bring my character's hand back to a more natural looking free throw pose. I'll bring the timeline forward again slightly, and repeat the same process in reverse in order to bring my character's arm back into a pose throw pose. If I play back, you can see my character winding up and then throwing. In the clip, you also saw a character get hit in the head by a ball and jerk forward. This was also done with the body key editor. If I select my character's torso, I can move it forward by using the outer circle controller. If I just scrub forward on the timeline and move my character back into position, you can see that when I play back, I now have my forward jerking motion. It's as easy as that. Now to make this more dynamic, I'm going to enlarge the character's head as he gets hit. I'll first go to the frame where his head is moved forward. Then I need to go into the body section, which will allow me to manipulate individual body parts with more detail. If I select the head, I can simply click on the edge and drag to make it larger. I also need to make the head smaller again though, so I'll skip to the frame where his head position has returned and return it to normal. I can simply input 100 into the width and height sections and the size will return to 100% again. Now you can see that when I play back, the animation looks a bit more exaggerated. To make the animation look more effective, I'll add in some facial emotion as well. I've set up some facial expressions that are more suitable for getting hit in the head, and I'm going to create some angry glances left and right. If I ever want to resize, rotate, or move facial parts, I can do that here in the face section. For this example though, let's move on to the facial key editor by clicking on the button to the top left. In the Facial tab, I can select which areas of the face I wish to manipulate. Orange means they are selected and that means they will move according to my mouse movements. In the Template section, there are a number of expression templates I can try out. If I select one of these and go back into the Facial tab, I can click and drag around to see the automatic expression my character will show. So how do you animate these expressions? Again, it's simply by using the timeline. Scrub ahead on the timeline and click and drag to create your first expression. Here I'm making my character look to his right. Move the time scrub ahead one more time and I'll move the glance down into the lower left. His mouth will also change automatically. One last time in the other direction again, and when I hit playback, you can see the full animation. You can create body and facial animations like these in minutes. 
there are different ways you can move your character's face as well. First, I'll deselect the eyes so that they won't move along with my character's head. Right now I have head orientation selected, and if I move my mouse around, the character's face will rotate around with it. If I deselect that and choose head tilting, you can see my character's head will tilt back and forth along with my mouse movement. These are great ways to get natural and subtle head movement from your character. There's also the Modify tab in which you can use the various sliders to give different default facial expressions to your character. The expression defined here will be the default base expression for your character, just like the templates defined in the previous tab. Your character will adjust automatically according to that base expression once you click and drag in the Facial Key Editor. To save your base facial expression, go to the Custom tab and simply select the Add button on the bottom right. Name your expression, and then you can use it at any time in the future. This works for both photo and sprite based characters. As you can see, now when I go back to the facial key editor, my character's base expression will be the one that I saved, and all the other expressions will be based on that one. One thing that's really cool about posing using the motion key editor is you can save your poses and reload them on any character at any time. To do that, simply select Save Pose and save your pose to any folder. I've chosen my Motion folder, which I'll show you later. Once I've finished, I'll set my character to Default Pose again, and then go into the Custom tab of my Motion section and double-click on the pose to reload it onto my character. The next thing I'll show you is how to use the Body section to detach body parts. I'll use Cyborg Girl here as an example. If you ever want to maintain a pose for a period of time in an animation, you can use the Absolute Key function beside the Default Pose button. If I go ahead in the timeline and press the absolute key button, it will place a keyframe for every single body part in that frame, as you can see when I open up the individual body part tracks. I want to maintain this pose for about 10 frames, and then have my character shoot her mechanical arm. So a few frames after my absolute keyframe, I'll go and adjust her torso backwards and up a bit from the recoil of the shot. Now when I play back, you can see the original pose will be maintained until the 10th frame. Now to detach the actual arm. To do this, I'll simply go into the body section, select the frame after my shooting pose, and move the arm ahead about half the screen. As you can see, the robot arm is still rooted to the upper arm, and it follows its movement, so you'll have to adjust this as the animation proceeds. I'll add in another position off screen, which will create another keyframe. Now when I play back, you can see the arm zoom away. If I want to slow down the animation, I can move the keyframes further apart. You can adjust the position and speed of the robot arm by refining the keyframes and adjusting the position in the body key editor to achieve the desired result. As you can see, the motion key editor is a multifunctional tool that's useful for a variety of different types of animations. Try it out today!